In this video, Karen goes through a short presentation giving a brief explanation of the organic groups module and what it's used for, along with a couple of examples of how we might want to use organic groups in our own project. In addition to that, Karen will also talk a little bit about how organic groups makes use of Drupal's entity and field systems in order to create the different relationships between a piece of content in a group, a member in a group, and all the different things that actually make up a group itself. Karen will also talk about access control in organic groups, although briefly, and permissions and how they relate. And finally, Karen will also discuss the difference between the organic groups module for creating small sites or sections within a site and a traditional Drupal multi-site installation. We're going to talk about organic groups in this series. In particular, we're going to talk about organic groups version 7.2. There is an earlier version, 7.1, for Drupal 7, and then there's uh, older versions for Drupal 6 and earlier versions of Drupal. But, uh, ver but 7.2 is different than either 7.1 or uh, uh, Drupal 6. So in particular, that's what we're talking about. So first of all, what is organic groups? Well, basically, organic groups is referring to the idea that you can create groups organically. In other words, uh, you can allow users to create groups and you can allow users to subscribe to groups and groups uh, can just grow kind of all by themselves. What are some reasons why you might use organic groups? Well, there's uh, probably two big reasons why people often use it. One is if you have a site and you want to create some distinct subsections of the site and each section needs to have its own content. Um, with or without access control, maybe maybe you want this to be public content, maybe you want it to be private content, but e regardless, it's a, a subsection of the site that has uh, its own characteristics and perhaps its own theme. The other reason why people can use organic groups is they actually have groups of people. They want to create some uh, special interest areas for group members and they might be public or they might be private depending on how uh, the group has been set up. A group has uh, got three components to it, basically. First of all, there's the group itself. So something has to be designated as the, dis the thing that describes the group. So uh, it could be a node um, that says the name of the group and the description of the group. Then there are members of the group. These are users. Uh, these would be uh, users on the Drupal site. Uh, and they can, they can become members of the group either by subscribing to the group or by, or by being assigned to the group. And then we have group content. That's the information uh, that belongs to the group. And depending on how your site is configured, perhaps you have articles that are uh, posted into groups. And that's the content that belongs to the group. In Drupal 6, organic groups was a little different. Uh, you could have one or more content types that were groups. And then you can have one or more content types that were group content that can be posted into groups. But everything, all the groups and all the content were nodes. In Drupal 7, it's different. In Drupal 7, any entity can be a group, and any entity can be group content. A node is one type of entity, um, but there are other types of entities. There can be a lot of different kinds of entities in Drupal 7. So a taxonomy term, um, uh, lots of other things, depending on how your site is configured. Uh, users are types of entities, so users actually are a special kind of group content. Um, users belong to groups and they need to have uh, things like permissions and roles. So they're treated a little bit differently than an article would be, but they are also, in a sense, group content. And everything, members and the content, are all connected to their groups using an entity reference field. And entity reference field is very similar to the node reference field. Um, that you may be familiar with from uh, other versions of Drupal and, and also in Drupal 7. Um, but that's just a field that allows you to connect two different entities and say that they're related to each other. Uh, group members are users who belong to groups. They can self-subscribe, they can, they can assign themselves to groups, or they can be assigned to groups, or you can have a process where they can um, request membership and then be approved. Uh, all depends on how you configure the group. And users can have roles and permissions uh, within the group to do something within the group that they can't do in other places. 
another thing that we should point out is there um, there's a concept of uh, different ways that you can create uh, small sites and there's two different ways that you can do that in in Drupal or two common ways of doing that in Drupal. One is you could do a Drupal multi-site installation and a Drupal multi-site installation would be completely separate sites that are all using the same code. So you have um, one place, one server, um, you have multiple sites, they're actually separate domains, they're separate databases, they're sharing code, but, but everything else is completely separate. Organic Groups is different than that. Organic Groups is a single site, a single domain, a single database, but it's um, basically subsections uh, within that single site. And the reason why you'd want to use one of these versus the others uh, probably comes down to whether or not you want to share users between groups, for instance, or you want to share content between groups. If you do, you probably want something like organic groups. If all these little sites are completely, totally separate from each other, they don't share users, they don't share content, then you do a normal multi-site installation. So uh, we'll go on now and talk more about how organic groups works. Oh, my